program is sponsored by the friends and partners of Tessitani Ministries. You too can be a part of it. God bless you. David knew that when he has the presence of God, he comes with the power of God. And when the power of God shows up, no enemy can stand. Hello, my wonderful brothers and sisters out there, my family. How are you doing? I bring greetings to you from the throne of grace. How are you doing? How are you doing? Hallelujah. God is so faithful. He's so awesome. I couldn't wait to be here to share the good news of our precious Lord Jesus Christ with you. Listen, there is no way that you can call on the name of the Lord and end up in shame it is not possible it is listen to me it is impossible for you to call on the name of the lord and end up in shame so i don't know what situation i don't know what circumstance you may be go you may you may find yourself right now but i want you to know that the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are safe i want to join my faith with you now to bring whatever is going on in your life we want to bring it and hide it in the name of the lord we want to say let the name of the lord secure my business may the name of the lord i want you to stretch forth your hands towards the screen and let us do this together the bible says in romans 10 11 that as you trust in the name of the lord you will never be put to shame so i want to join my faith with yours right now stretch forth your hands towards the screen there is no screen between you and god there may be a screen between me and you but there is no screen between you and god heavenly father we come together today and we bring the businesses the bank accounts the employment letters the jobs the finances the family the children the spouses the wives the husbands the the, the fiances the ministries the extended families the friends and loved ones the health of everyone that is connecting with me now everyone that is under the influence of my voice now we bring everything about them and we hide it and secure it in the name of the Lord anyone that is struggling with health issues and is watching me right now I say let this moment be the end of that illness receive your healing now in the mighty name of Jesus I want you to lay your hands on any part of your body where you know that you are experiencing pain if it's a place that you cannot touch and you know that you are sick I want you to just wrap your hands around yourself if you're believing God for healing for someone I want you to stretch forth your hands towards the screen father we thank you we know that you are a faithful father you are the great physician you are the mighty deliverer father we call on you this moment we ask that you have mercy on us we ask that your healing power reach that brother wherever he is right now yeah let the healing power of God touch your knee right now I command that pain to cease I command that pain to cease from your knee in the mighty name of Jesus anyone that is seek from this moment become healed become whole in the name of Jesus you are going to come back and testify you are coming back to share your testimony in Jesus name we pray amen I hide your children in the name of the Lord I hide your marriage in the name of the Lord whatever storm the enemy is raising against that marriage right now I say let that storm calm down now by the power and authority in the name of Jesus you shall enjoy your marriage your marriage shall not end prematurely thank you Heavenly Father I just declare peace in your home I declare an uninterrupted peace and joy in your home in Jesus name 
Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the time and the privilege to be here again today. We ask that you breathe upon your word. We ask, O oh Lord, that you open our hearts to receive. Precious Lord Jesus, we ask in your name that the heart of the people be receptive to, so that when your word comes to them today, Father, let them receive it, O oh Lord, and let them act upon it. Put your spirit within them so that they can act on your word and come back with results. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. My name is Tessie Tani and this is your hour of solution. This is your moment of solution. Tell somebody that this is my moment of solution. I want you to tap the person. If you're watching and there's somebody by your right or your left, I want you to tell the person, listen, this is my hour. This is my moment. I need to focus. I don't need to be distracted because I know that God has me in mind this is my moment of solution and as you make such declarations I pray that this very hour God will turn things around for your good God will turn things around in your favor every gang up against you in your place of employment hallelujah they are going to know that you serve and you believe in the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob God we stand tall for you and he will take your place in battle thank you father in jesus name we have made these declarations amen god bless you thank you for joining me i have some questions that i'm going to be talking about today i am going to be sharing with you today about the need for you to draw closer to god the holy spirit is asking you to draw closer to god hallelujah but before i go into the word for today I want to take some questions. I encourage people to take the number on the screen, send us a message, reach us on WhatsApp, visit our website, tesitani.org, send us an email, info at tesitani.org, or send us a message on WhatsApp. I reply, I read all the messages on WhatsApp and I respond to them. I have a lot of people who have sent me messages and I just see the hunger. I see the desire and the yearning in their hearts to draw closer to God. So I took those questions, most of them, and I told them that I am going to be addressing it when I come on earth. So today, before I go into the theme of today's message, which is draw nearer to God, as a matter of fact, the theme draw nearer to God, I actually wanted to share on that today because of the questions and the messages I have been receiving from majority of people on whatsapp so many people are asking me i wrote down some of the questions how can i draw closer to god another person asked me how can somebody be close to god yet another person asked me i want to get closer to god how do i do that so i keep receiving the same question that is talking about coming closer to god and i am so happy i am so glad that people are hungry if you are asking how do i come closer to god how do i I draw closer to God that shows already that you are hungry for something more so it is my joy it is my greatest joy to see people reaching out to me and asking me how do they get closer to God hallelujah when I just came into ministry, before the Lord asked me to come on set and minister his word to the people, I said, Lord, I do not just want to be a preacher, but Lord, I want to know you. My greatest desire is to know you and then make you known. So for people to reach me that they want to draw closer to God, I am so happy because I see God using me as a tool to make his people to know him. So if you are watching me and you sent me those messages i am going to be addressing it shortly but before i do that i also have other questions maybe because of time i'm going to take two questions and then i will talk about how you can draw closer how one can draw closer to god somebody asked me i am living with a man whom i am not yet married to every time i try to separate myself from him i am unable to do what do i do about this hallelujah thank you father another person asked me says 
I am married, but I still enjoy spending time in romantic conversations with my ex. I have tried to put a stop to this, but I am unable to. What do I do? This question and the other question seems like the Holy Spirit is going to be revealing a similar answer to both questions because they both have to do with flesh. So I'm going to address those two shortly. Another person asks, why is it that some people face persecution or attack for a longer time than others? This person says, my name is Idemudia. Idemudia is asking, why is it that some people face persecution and attacks for a longer time? other than other people i did mudia thank you for your question i am going to be addressing this shortly as well hallelujah so the, the person that is saying i am living with a man who i'm not yet married to every time i try to separate myself from him i am unable to and the other person that says i am married but i am still enjoying spending time with um, romantic conversations with my ex she said i have tried to put a stop to this but i am unable to I don't know if this person is a male or female, but the person said, I have tried to stop it, but I'm unable to. So the answer that I have for these two questions is that you, this is your flesh that is speaking. So the person that says, I am living with a man that I am not yet married to, I am unable to stop myself from such um, activities. And the other person who is saying, I am married, but I am still communicating with my ex. I've tried to stop, but I'm not able to stop. What do I do? I would like to let you know, first of all, that right now, I don't know if you are born again or not, but for you to come out to the open and ask, what do you do? That means you are ready to make a change. It's obvious that you have really tried, but you are unable to. And I want to let you know that the reason that you are unable to is because you are trying to stop it by yourself. What you are doing right now is a sinful act and you are trying to stop it by yourself. Flesh cannot conquer flesh flesh the only thing that can conquer flesh is the spirit of god so when the spirit of god is at work in you when the spirit of god comes in you to live in you it is by the spirit of god that you will be able to begin to subdue your flesh remember the bible says i don't know where you are at in your christian faith but i know that you know your conscience is telling you that you are doing the wrong thing and god is happy that you are asking because god is not out there to condemn you he's out there to save you from that sinful nature so i want you to lift up your hands if you're watching right now and say dear father if you've not given your life to christ you just said this prayer with me say lord jesus come into my heart from today become my lord and savior i believe that jesus you are the son of god and i confess with my mouth that jesus you are lord forgive me all my sins thank god i am now born again and now i want you to ask for the lord to fill you with a spirit with the holy spirit of god let the spirit of god baptize you now in the name of jesus let the spirit of god fill you now in the name of jesus i say receive the infilling of the holy spirit their precious holy spirit breathe upon your people breathe upon your people this moment we ask in the name of jesus in jesus name we pray amen hallelujah so the reason i led you to christ and i ask you to ask for the infilling of the holy spirit is because you cannot stop fleshly activities by your own efforts you need the spirit of god god says i will put my spirit within you and cause you to obey my laws so you need the spirit of god to be able to subdue the flesh when the spirit of the lord takes over you will see that all of a sudden you will start to manifest the fruit of the spirit and you will stop manifesting the fruit of the flesh remember the bible says in galatians 5 22 that the fruit of the spirit are 
hallelujah it says the fruit of the spirit are so what you have on the inside of you if it is the holy spirit that is resident within you then you begin to manifest the fruit of the spirit if you don't have the holy spirit in you and you are trying to stop fleshly activities it can be very hard that is why you've been struggling you've been struggling trying to do it by yourself hallelujah but i thank god because from today as you yield yourself and surrender to the holy spirit of god he will do great and mighty things in you and through you the struggle ceases hallelujah you will start to be able to resist every work of sin every work of sin every work of temptation you will begin to be able to resist and flee from them hallelujah remember a cashew tree would only produce cashew fruits a mango tree would only produce mango fruit so if you don't have the spirit of the lord in you and you are trying to stop fleshly fruits from bring manifesting in your life it is a huge struggle that is why you have been struggling so i thank god for your life that from today it marks a new beginning in your life hallelujah i'm gonna go quickly to um brother idemudia says why is it that some people face persecution and attacked for a longer time than others idemudia i would like and for every other person who may have similar uh, um, questions in their heart i would like you to know that when it comes to the issue of persecution and attacks hallelujah we cannot define god god defines us we do not define god we cannot tell god the level of attack that we are to receive i don't know where your attack is coming from but if you are walking faithfully with god i want to assure you that even though those attack may seem like they are lasting for too long remember that god is a faithful god he will come through for you and you will come out victorious in the name of jesus hallelujah attack is not a sign that god is against you as some people may think hallelujah attack in fact draws you closer to god i want you to focus on god's purpose for your life that god let us know that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts as far as the heaven is from the earth so his ways are far from our ways and his thoughts so different from our thoughts i want to give you for example the example of Joseph in the Bible in Genesis 37 if you read through 50 you will see the life of Joseph Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers he was in prison through false accusations he was forgotten by those who had promised to help him life kept hitting the bottom and the bottom kept dropping out hallelujah undoubtedly Joseph was often tempted to wallow in self-pity he could have sat down and said why me am i not the same joseph that god showed that my brothers were bowing before me am i not the same joseph who god gave so much favor that my father loves me and gave me the coat of many colors he could have sat down there and wallow in self-pity but joseph focused on his purpose and he continued to fear the lord and trust in the lord hallelujah as he looked at all the misfortunes that plagued his life he could have been wondering what have i done to deserve this why am i the one suffering all these persecutions why are my brothers not suffering all these kind of things he could have sat down and be wondering about all that hallelujah he would have been asking where is god where is the god of covenant but eventually as joseph persevered he discovered god's purpose but this was only after 15 years of hardship and suspense so I don't know what hardship you or anyone you know may be going through right now. But I want you to know that finally at the end, as Joseph rose to high position in Egypt, he brought deliverance from the famine to his family and to thousands of other families. God's purposes were realized in Joseph's life. Sometimes it's not about how long the journey is. Instead of just focusing on the journey, let us know that the destination is going to be bright and beautiful our focus should be on keeping our eyes on him and trusting him and i also want to ask you sometimes it's not about the trials that we are going through it's about what are we doing when in that place of trials are we talking about it are we just complaining about it or are we praying through it i want 
want to encourage you to pray your way through it persevere and continue to trust in God and God will come through for you he is a faithful father hallelujah God bless you I want to take the third question because of time I am having to write through those things I just pray that the Spirit of the Lord bless these words into your heart I want to talk about the topic of how do I come closer to God hallelujah how do I come closer to God I want to read quickly the scripture in in James 4 James 4 I want to read from verse 7 to 10 verse 7 thank you Jesus it says so humble yourselves before God resist the devil and he will flee from you come close to God and God will come close to you hallelujah I want to stop there for now so somebody is saying how do I come closer to God to be honest with you God is not far from us God is very near to us if you want to go close to someone you need to know where that person you need the address you need to know where that person is so that you can make your way there to where that person is but God is very close to us Jesus says in John that no one can come to the father except he first draw them so as God is drawing you to come closer to him that is the reason you're asking this question right now your responsibility is to respond is to get up is to say Lord I am coming so how do you do this how do you draw closer to him in the book of James 4 if you read 7 to 10 it gives up some ways that we can draw closer to God hallelujah the number one it says humble yourselves before God yield to his authority and commit your life to him and his control and be willing to follow him first of all you have to acknowledge you have to humble yourself before God and acknowledge that where you are now is not good enough there is something more you want to go deeper you want to come closer closer to him you want to come deeper into the realms of the spirit once you acknowledge that where you are now is not good enough once you humble yourself in such a way you begin to respond to where he's calling you to come closer to him you begin to yield to his authority and his will you commit your life to him and his control you say lord here i am i do not have control over my life take my life and control it take my time and control it I as you begin to follow him this way as he leads you you yield you respond you follow hallelujah God takes the initiative to draw you but you have the responsibility to respond to him and say Lord here I am I am coming hallelujah so you humble yourself acknowledge where you are and then begin to commit your life and give him total control of your life hallelujah and number two you resist the devil because temptations are going to come your way to try to pull you back because Satan is very happy when we are complacent you can go to church seven days a week you can go for all the night videos and all the church programs but listen the moment you decide that you want to leave that level of just going to church that you are and really come closer to God to come to know him Satan will come against you he gets upset he did it to me he did it to so many people I know he gets upset that you want to just stop sitting on the sidelines you want to follow God he gets so upset about it and he will do everything he will even use people you know to try to stop you he will say what is this new zeal what is this new fire what is this new passion where do you think you are heading to he wants you to be a lukewarm Christian he wants you to be a cold Christian the moment you say I want to draw closer to God you are saying Lord I want to be on fire for you listen Satan will come against you hallelujah he will either use friends or he will use temptation he will use things that you like to tempt you so that you can continue to live in sin and remain in that level hallelujah of lukewarmness but you have to make up your mind and say lord i am coming after you lord i am chasing after you it doesn't matter what i lose along the way remember apostle paul said in philippians uh, um, 3 he said everything that was gained to me i consider them to become like garbage why because for the surpassing knowledge of knowing christ he wanted to know christ he wanted nothing else to do with this world all he wanted to know was christ 
Hallelujah. So he followed him with zeal and passion. Praise God. So number two, you have to learn to resist the devil all the time. Don't allow Satan to entice you and tempt you to pull you back to the state that you are. Number three, wash your hands and purify your heart. Hallelujah. Be cleansed from sin. Be cleansed from sin. Replace your desire to sin with your desire to experience God's purity. To be a friend of God, you must hate sin. You cannot be a friend of sin, a friend of the world, and a friend of God at the same time. Hallelujah. You must hate sin sin if you want to be a friend of God thank you father the Bible says I'm going to read James 4 verse 4 it says you adulteresses do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God he said therefore whoever wishes to be a friend of the world is the enemy of God if you read it the opposite way whoever wishes to be a friend of God becomes an enemy of the world so you must hate sin with all your heart because God is a holy God he cannot tolerate sin hallelujah you must hate sin with everything in you and say Lord I am willing to let go of everything sinful so that I can come closer to you hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And remember, you must depend on the Holy Spirit. All these things I am telling you, you must depend on the Holy Spirit to do it through you because you cannot do it by yourself. Hallelujah. And also number four, let there be sorrow and deep grief for your sins. Every time you fall short, every time you make mistake, you accidentally commit sin. You must be sorrowful about it. You must express deep grief for your sins to God and let God know that you are sorry and repent from them and that's it the moment you say you forgive and you truly mean it from your heart you continue your journey with God and I want to let you know that getting close to God is a lifetime journey you can never get to one point and say I am now close to God so I am okay it's a lifetime journey you continue to desire him you continue to pursue and seek after him and as you draw closer to him you will find out that you begin to drop things things that used to be big deal to you it will begin to point those areas in your life to you and you begin to you know let them die and let them fade away and the spirit of the lord will possess you completely and use you even for the glory of god thank you father that's four things i just told you based on the biblical passage of james i want you to go read it james chapter 4 from verse 7 to verse 10 is what i just read to you i want to add also that getting closer to god apart from the congregational worship and prayer that you do in church I want you to cultivate a personal time where you sit down just you and God alone you worship him you talk to him you study his word because every time you study the word of God you see the things that God do not like and the things that God likes so cultivate that time alone with God where you study his word and hear from him where you worship him where you pray it is okay to do this as part of a member of a church but it is very important for you to have your personal time alone with God as you practice all these things that I have mentioned you will see that you will not be where you used to be before when it comes to your relationship with God I pray for you that God will give you the grace to be able to do all these things and God will continue to put a spirit within you and cause you to obey his laws his commands in Jesus name Amen. If you've not given your life to Christ, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. Have mercy on me. From today, I am now born again. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations. I want you to find a Bible-believing church wherever you are and begin to serve God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. God bless you. I love you and God loves you more. Thank you for being a part of this program. Join us same time next week for another fresh episode.